Hello and welcome to chapter 13 on meiosis. We're going to be covering meiosis and gametogenesis. Um, basically we're looking at eukaryotic cell division. Mitosis is basically where we get the division of the nucleus, the cytokinesis division of the cytoplasm. We went over this before and basically mitosis is um, basically growth in cell division. Gametes are only produced by a special type of cell division called a meiosis. And this is where we get non-identical daughter cells with roughly half the number of chromosomes, or with one set of chromosomes. This is the basis for sexual reproduction. Again, in sexual reproduction, we're going to have two um, situations going on. A reproductive cell division called meiosis, and then basically a process by which we increase the number of um, we increase the number of chromosomes called fertilization. Offspring of sexual reproduction are basically different from their parents, and they're different from one another. So if we take a look at um, these kind of individuals over here, we see that all these different individuals who are family are all vastly different from one another, which is a good thing. Again, let's take a look at our chromosomes. This is a human being karyotype. We have our sex chromosomes in this area right here. And we have our autosomes, which are the rest of the 22 chromosomes um, of this area over here. And those chromosomes, we have what we call a homologous pair, one from your dad and then one from your mom. Okay. And so that uh, every individual is going to have 44 plus 2 sex chromosomes. Okay. 23 come from your mom, 23 come from your dad. The sperm and eggs are each going to have one of these sets. So you're going to have one chromosome number one, you're going to have one chromosome number two, one chromosome number three, one chromosome number four, and basically it's a 50-50 chance whether you get one of those chromosomes or another. Again, here's a little introduction to what chromosomes are, and, and so we're looking at maternal chromosomes, paternal chromosomes, and we have one, two large chromosomes, two medium chromosomes, and two of these small chromosomes. These are what we call homologous, uh, uh, um, a homologous pair to one another. Um, these uh, chromosomes that are exact copies of one another are called um, Chromatid, chromatids in there, um, and these are duplicates, so these are called sister chromatids of one another. These are non-sister chromatids of one another, okay? Um, second thing is, um, we, before we looked at the life cycle, interphase, and then um, meiosis, had prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase, in the life cycle, basically what we have is here we have two individual human beings. These individual human beings in their uh, gonads <laughs> have a um, uh, uh, meiotic division, which is a reductive cell division, in which case we produce an egg and a sperm, each with 23 chromosomes. These two come together through fertilization to give us our diploid zygote, which then will grow by mitosis and um, um, uh, growth and development in order to become adults, which then will go through meiosis again. And so the life cycle is a little bit different. Again, we're going to be covering life cycles quite a bit. Sorry about that. We're going to be covering life cycles quite a bit, and this is what we call alternation of generations. This is the haploid generation. This is the diploid generation. In animals, the vast majority of the life cycle is spent in the diploid condition and a relatively small amount of the life cycle, uh, uh, in fact, sometimes hours, is just spent in the haploid condition. And, but again, this is different in other organisms. Uh, making reproductive cells is basically what's going on. A big difference between mitosis is that in, mito uh, in mitosis, you're making identical copies of all the cells. The cells have to be exactly the same. Whereas in meiosis, we are actually alternating the possibilities of what the offspring can be in that not only are we um, choosing randomly which homologs should go into the gametes 
but also we have an event called crossing over that we will talk about a little in a little bit and what this does is it actually changes um, one of the, uh, the the homologs and so that they are different and so when we look at these gametes here is not only are we picking one homolog or the other from the original cell but we are also um, kind of mixing those and typically we will see at least one crossing over per chromosome and sometimes especially on the larger ones we may see more these are not identical to what's in the original cell and so again here's looking at that meiosis process again here we have a homolog this homolog during um, metaphase one line up when they separate each goes into uh, a, an individual um, cell and then these sister chromatids uh, separate that occurs during meiosis one and then the, uh, meiosis two sorry about that uh, again here is going over meiosis one again the big thing with meiosis one is these homologs are lining up on the um, um, on the equator and that these homologs are separating and so during anaphase one these cells are essentially haploid again crossing over happens um, during prophase one and again we tend to see a little bit uh, more during anaphase one where basically there's an exchange of genetic information on, the, on these chromatids and then we end up with these chromosomes that are actually different than the chromosomes that we saw on the original uh, one and then again during telophase these are uh, essentially haploid during meiosis 2 basically what's happening is is again because probably mitosis evolved sorry meiosis evolved from mitosis in meiosis 2 you need to reduce the amount of dna and so again here we have these kind of supposed copies of where we ended up uh, with during um, mitosis and we need to separate those so that we end up each with four cells each with one homolog from each parent and then because they those homo uh, those were homologs had copies of one another we need to separate out those copies so we end up with four and again this is comparing um, mitosis and meiosis uh, we both start out with the same material we both start out with a uh, duplication of the chromosomes however in um, mitosis we end up with daughter cells that are exact identicals all we're doing here is separating out the sister chromatids from one another whereas here during metaphase one we are separating the homologs that is the maternal and the paternal um, particular chromosomes and we are ending up with genetically different um, gametes and again crossing over is one way that this variation occurs and then here we have um, kind of artificially set up a, um, a homologous pair these homologous pair due to sequence likenesses can actually exchange bits of their DNA we're going to go into that in uh, biology 230 and then what we end up with is a, a homolog that the sister chromatids are now actually different and so now instead of having two different types of chromosomes we have a paternal chromosome a maternal chromosome and then this unique combination of those and then the alternate unique com combination and so again vastly different chromosomes and so again when we talk about the production of egg and sperm we see that we only take one of each pair of chromosomes and so when we produce an egg we take this chromosome maybe this chromosome this chromosome I'm being lazy this chromosome this chromosome and so there is a one-half chance of getting each chromosome so the chance of getting all let's say the dad so this is the Y chromosome that the dad um, was coming that's the chance of us getting all the all the uh, chromosomes that this individual got from uh, his dad would be um, one half to the 23rd power which is a relatively small number okay right, so we talked about that uh, and that's a case of what we call independent assortment egg and sperm can only take any combination from the original sense and there's original chance in there okay 
Uh, and again, independent assortment creates more variation. The uh, crossing over we can create more um, um, variation as well. And so again, this is uh, an example of where we get independent assortment. And so we have these two possibilities. We start out with exactly the same material, but again, we're going to get um, different offspring. And, and crossing over is going to count the same more. Again, 2 to the 23rd power is over 8 million different combinations that we have. So you would have 1 in 8 million possibility of getting exactly the same. Um, again, you produce millions of sperm, and there's only one egg. Um, these sperm all don't um, combine with the egg, it's, it's only one. So I see that there's time, and I'm going to rush out a little bit. But where this comes about is what we have, this puggle pro puppy problem that uh, we talked about. Uh, a puggle is basically a, uh, uh, a pug and a beagle put together. And you get this unique, very cute individual in here. However, if you take two puggles and you hybridize them and you, and you make them together, you're never going to get another puggle puppy. Why is that happening? Because again, we have these maternal pug genes and the paternal beagle genes, and they're never going to come together to exactly give you something like a puggle. You can only do that. Again, please take a look at the sexual life cycles, be able to compare mitosis and meiosis, and again, we are going to use this to look at asexual and say sexual reproduction, which we will cover uh, later on. Okay, have a great day, and uh, again, genetics and heredity we will talk about in the next chapter.